The subject of today's video is this LaCrosse BC900 battery charger. The problem with this unit is that it won't charge more than two or three batteries at any given time without turning off. To demonstrate what's wrong with this charger, I'm going to first plug in the AC adapter. As you can see, the unit is powered up and ready to go. All four slots are reading null, as they should. I'll put a battery in the first slot, and you should be able to see that it briefly checks the voltage of the battery, and then goes into automatic charge mode at the 200 milliamp hour rate, and then starts to charge the battery. What's being displayed now is the actual charging current going to the battery. This is the normal operation. If I put a second battery in, the same thing should happen. And once again, normal charging has commenced in slot 2. I'll now put a battery in slot 3, and you should see the behavior change. Now you can see that the unit is sort of resetting itself, for lack of a better term. What I believe is happening is that when the third battery is placed in the unit and it starts demanding the current from the power supply, the power supply can no longer keep up for some reason and it's causing the battery charger to power itself off and then power itself back on. And that cycle keeps happening over and over and over as the current limit gets tripped either in the unit or in the power supply. I'm suspecting that this AC adapter unit is failing and that this is the root of the problem. However, as you can see the unit is sealed up. There's no screws holding it together. This is going to be kind of difficult to take apart. Here's a look at the AC adapter with the cover removed. You can see what I ended up having to do was use this Dremel tool with a cutoff wheel to kind of gently go around the seam and uh, kind of make the part that way. And you can see it kind of made a mess of things, but uh, these, these two halves were permanently glued together and uh, I think that was about the only way I was going to be able to get this apart with the tools that I had on hand. So I just kind of went through very carefully and I tried not to sink the cutoff wheel in too deep. You can probably see there's a couple spots on this side where I crashed into the heat sink a little bit and uh, I think I was okay on this side. I didn't nick these wires or anything over here which was good but uh, I was sort of taking a chance with this and I got lucky that I, <laughs> that I didn't cut any of the components. But, uh, but anyway what was really interesting uh, once I got this apart and you can probably see here is that these capacitors down here all have the typical uh, failed capacitor bloat going on. So what I think is going on here with this unit is that it's still functioning, um, but these capacitors have just gone far enough out of spec now, probably the big one up here too, where they're, the circuit is just not quite working uh, as designed. It's probably not quite able to provide the, the current that's required when the unit has you know three or four batteries in it. Uh, the ESR is probably way up and, and the capacitance is probably off too. So I'm going to just try and pry up on this with a screwdriver. And Well that came out a whole lot easier than I thought it was gonna. It looks like the power contacts are just sort of soldered on the board there. You can see there's a couple of solder blobs right here. I'm not sure if I'm getting this at the right angle, but there's just a couple of solder blobs on the circuit board right behind this transformer that are attached to the power blades here. And I could try and unsolder those, and this would probably come out of the board. It doesn't look like it's soldered to the board. It looks like it's soldered up here. Um, but what, I'm, what I think I'm going to do is I've got enough clearance with this bent up out of the way as long as I'm careful with this and don't you know push this too much or bend it too many times I think I have enough room to access the leads 
for uh, removing those caps on the back side of this board. So, so I'm going to start taking these caps out of here and I'm just going to put a little flux on the board here on the solder joint just to try and help things flow a little bit better. Hit this with a little bit of solder wick. You can see there, I've got the first cap removed. And luckily the board is sort of marked there. You can see sort of the black side of the capacitor indicator there. That'll indicate the negative side. So that'll make it easy uh, when I replace the, the new caps. So here's the, the old cap. And as you saw before, it's bloated on the top. So I'm sure it's, uh, it's out of spec. Not only capacitance wise, it's probably got high ESR as well. Um, you can see here it's supposed to be a 1000 mic cap at 10 volts. Not sure if the others are the same size. I'll have to figure that out when I pull them out. It may be hard to find uh, this cap in this size. So I may end up leaving this one. It actually visually looks okay. That doesn't mean that it is okay, but um, finding a replacement in this size and this value maybe tough. I've got the three large capacitors that were in this part of the board removed. You can see them here. And I've got my replacements ready to go here. Here's a close-up look at the capacitor and you can see the name on there is Chong X or some kind of Chinese junk name but they'll be fine for this for this little supply. Normally I like to buy better quality caps from Mauser or DigiKey but uh, these were readily available from Amazon and I was able to get them in two days. So now I'll start loading these caps into the board and what I'm going to do is take the negative electrode which is denoted by that kind of grayish stripe and the minus sign there and I'm going to orient that lead so that it's in the side of the marking on the circuit board here that sort of has the black on it. And I suppose I can load the others while I'm at it. So now with those in place, I'm just going to bend these leads over a little bit to just help hold these caps in place while I solder them in. Okay, I might have had the camera out of sequence there. Not sure if I get the soldering in there or not, but if I didn't, then uh, I apologize for that. So now I'll just clip the leads. So I've got the three caps up here replaced. Now to do the job right, I should replace this big cap and there's a little smaller one in there too. Um, I wasn't able to source this one on Amazon for a reasonable price and I really didn't feel like putting an, out, an order in with Mauser or DigiKey just for a handful of capacitors. This one visually looks like it's okay. I'm going to assume that this is still functioning. Same thing for that little guy that's in there. I'm not even sure what value that one is. I can't see it. But I think they'll be okay. I think they'll be serviceable for at least a few more years. So I'm not going to worry too much about those. I'm just going to go ahead and try and re reassemble this thing now. So I'll just clean these joints up a little bit. Just get some of that excess flux off of there. So now I should be good to go. Okay, so I've got that board snapped back in. I'll reinsert the power cord now. And now for the purposes of testing this, I'm just going to drop this cover on. And just leave it on there loosely for now, just so that I don't shock myself. For right now, I'm going to leave it loose just in case I need to uh, pull this thing off again for some reason. I've got the unit plugged in over here, but the power strip isn't energized yet. So I'm just going to energize this and we'll hope no fire or smoke comes out. And so far so good. So now I'll just plug the battery charger in and we'll see if it powers up normally. And everything looks good. Got null across all four ports. 
So now I'll put some batteries in and see what happens. So it looks like the first one is starting to charge just the way that it should. So now I'll load the rest of this up and see what happens. So, so far so good. So I've let this run for, I don't know, 15 or 20 minutes or so. And it looks like the batteries are all charging normally. And the unit doesn't seem to be power cycling like it was before. So I think this thing is now working the way that it should. I ended up using this black silicone adhesive that I had out in the garage. Normally I'd use this for working on cars to make gaskets and things like that. But um, I thought this might be a good product to use on sealing up this case instead of epoxy uh, because it wouldn't permanently bond itself to the case and then be you know difficult to remove if I ever wanted to take this apart again for some reason um, this stuff here I should be able to like cut it and pick it out with a knife and uh, pry this apart again if I need to in the future if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and if you'd like to leave a comment or subscribe feel free to do that as well thanks for watching